people on our side because we've been running with this message of, oh, we're going to make things a little cleaner and greener, but keep the rest of the system the same. And most people aren't willing to fight for a cleaner, greener version of the world we have now because they know that would still be a world of injustice based on exploitation filled with people afraid of their own government. And nobody really wants to fight for that. And if we embrace a more radical vision, and if we're honest about the fact that we actually are talking about threatening our economy, we can get a lot more support from that. When our opponents attack us and say, oh, they're trying to ruin the economy, we should be turning around and say, ruin the economy? Hell yes, we're going to flip the whole goddamn thing on its head. <laughs> And the, the threats of what we're talking about run deeper than that. Because even for the people that our current economy has worked for, that have achieved what everyone's supposed to achieve in this, in this society and in this economy, when they've gotten their wealth and they've gotten all the stuff that they can buy with it, turns out that didn't really fulfill them either. Even the people for whom, even the people who benefited from our economic model have turned out to not be happy. Because that, that model that we're working with of trying to meet all of our human and emotional needs with the ever-increasing consumption of material goods turns out to not be true. That, that doesn't work. And, and as much as we know that renewable energy can, can meet our power needs, it can't meet our human and emotional needs. We can't, we've never found a technology that can produce enough energy for that. And so that model it's going to have to end. That paradigm of trying to meet all of our emotional needs with consumer goods, that's going to have to end too. And that also is a fundamental threat to our economy. Because that model of us being really good consumers and trying to meet all of our needs with material goods, that actually is part of the foundation of our economy. That is how we've been able to maintain this crazy house of cards is is with that ever increasing ever increasing consumption of material goods and if that growth stops then our economy actually does start to fall apart we we actually can't continue on this path of you know paying down our 14 trillion dollar debt if our economy is not growing um, our, our growth rate has to be at least as big as the interest we're paying on that debt otherwise things start to fall apart and and so we are talking about ruining that economy. We are talking about knocking down that house of cards. And, and Homeland Security probably should be scared of that, you know, because that is going to mean a radical change. Because if, if they don't keep people addicted to this current system, then they can't control people as well. And people start creating the kind of communities that they actually want to see. And, and in the absence of that corporate control, people start building a different model. We're seeing it in Detroit, where a lot of the corporations packed up and left. And people were saying for a long time, you know, if we don't have these industries, Detroit's just going to fall apart. And it kind of did. I mean, things, things got kind of ugly there. A lot of people packed up and moved out. But the people that stayed started building a new model. They started looking around and saying, boy, we've got a lot of empty lots in Detroit. Let's start growing some food on them. And, and now people from around the world are actually going to Detroit as a model of urban agriculture, as a model of how people can build something new in the void where corporations have walked out. And it's certainly been a hardship on those people, but now they're building a different kind of power structure, a different kind of community that's not as easily controlled by people from the outside because they're not dependent on those corporations anymore. They're becoming self-sufficient. And self-sufficiency is a threat to power. If we're talking about building a, a more self-sufficient community here in Salt Lake, Homeland Security should be concerned because that means it will be harder for them to control us if we're not dependent upon them. And, and the thing is, when we're, when we're talking about this reality, our, our opponents already know that. The, the CEOs and, and economists and politicians that are at the top of our system, they know that all this stuff that 
a lot of our movement has been saying about how don't worry, we can make this shift to a, a clean energy economy and keep everything else the same. They know that's bullshit. We've actually only been fooling our allies. All the people who have been locked out of this process and locked out of the, the economic growth, um, we've been fooling those people. We've been tricking those people into thinking that they're not on our side. But we haven't been fooling our opponents. They've continued to work against us and block any reforms that we've tried to do. Maybe it's time that we start embracing what we're actually talking about. <laughs> Maybe it's time that our movement gets honest about the fact that, yes, we're talking about ruining the economy and creating one that works for more than 1% of our population. Amen. Yes, we're talking about threatening homeland security and actually establishing a democracy in this country. Amen. And when we do that, I think we'll find that we actually have a lot more people on our side than we ever realized. I think we'll find that people are ready for that. You know, a, a lot of these polls that are out there are finding that somewhere around 80 to 90 percent of Americans think that our country's on the wrong track. That's a huge percentage. I think that's higher than the percentage of people who think that Elvis is dead. <laughs> like, everyone in our country gets that this is not working. Everyone in our country wants to see something radically different. And, and we have a core part of that radical change that we need, which is changing our, our energy economy, changing the rest of our economy with it, and changing our political system with it. We've got part of that radical difference that people actually want to see and that people would be willing to stand up and fight for. We just need to start admitting it, that yes, what we're talking about is radical change. We're talking about changing the foundation of how things work in this country. We're talking about making it more inclusive. We don't just want to end coal. We want to end inequality too. We want to end the exploitation model too. And, and that has big impacts. I mean, if, if we don't have enough energy with renewable energy to meet our human and emotional needs, it means we have to go back to finding another way to meet our human and emotional needs. Like maybe with human relationships, which is actually the only way that those human needs have actually been fulfilled, is by making bigger connections with people, by actually being a part of a community and a neighborhood and a family and all those things that people actually do still value. I mean, as, as much as the last 50 years has tried to encourage people to be consumers, tried to encourage people to only meet their needs with more consumer goods, they still are fighting against that human nature that knows that that's unfulfilling. They still have to run 300 commercials a day, 300 advertisements in one, 3,000, sorry, 3,000 advertisements a day that we see in one form or another to convince us that we're consumers. It takes 3,000 reminders a day to make us good consumers because it's so unnatural to us and because we still have these values that are desiring to be more than consumers and it's so hard to beat that out of people it's so hard to make people forget that they're community members that they're family members that they're citizens that they're all these other roles besides just being consumers it takes a lot of effort the marketing industry in this country is huge they spend billions and billions of dollars to try to beat that out of us. And it still hasn't worked. Still people, no matter what their political beliefs are or anything like that, if you get them in an honest moment and you get people talking about what they actually value, nobody's saying, well, I, I really value all my stuff. I really value my big screen TV. Most people in their honest moments are going to say that they value their families. They, they value their friendships. They value those human relationships because that's what's actually fulfilling them. And, and what we're talking about is not really shifting people's values. It's not creating some new value set for people. It's actually living in accordance to our values that we already have. We have the big advantage in this battle in that what we're trying to sell people on 
actually makes them happier. The other side is trying to sell people on exploitation and unfulfilling consumer goods. It's hard for them. They have to work really hard at that. And all we have to do is introduce that hint that another world is possible and people want to join us. It's really easy to get people to join us if we're honest about how threatening we really are. We really are. We are talking about radical change here. And, and maybe that worries Homeland Security. Maybe that worries some other folks. Maybe that worries the corporations that are in charge. But that's good. I mean, if Homeland Security and, and big corporate interests aren't worried about what we're saying, maybe we're not saying anything that's actually going to change anything. We need to embrace that. We need to admit that, yes, we're threatening that power structure. Yes, we're threatening their economy. And we're going to build something better in the ashes of this world. So thank you all for being here today. What? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, oh, wrap what are you it up. Saying? Yeah. I'm wrapping it up. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, actually, I get to say June 23rd. Today is June 23rd. Woo! Yeah. Woo! And it's a day of synergy, and we really created that today, and I'm really excited. Um, 23 years ago, James Hansen first spoke to our leaders. He stood in front of Congress and warned them about uh, skyrocketing carbon emissions and our impact, our human activity, and how our way of living was probably going to lead to a catastrophic result. So today, 